dogs, right? They, yeah, dogs. Anyway, so I'm going to make another video. I don't delete my videos. It's really stream conscious. There's not much editing, or if any editing that's done. I was talking about Magic the Gathering and Rudy's video about, you know, is Magic the Gathering in a bad place right now? I think his video is actually titled Magic the Gathering is in trouble and he conveys very negative feelings about Magic the Gathering, current man's man, even Mero. Uh, and then he goes on and on and on. I mean, yeah, it's just basically a video that I would make, you know, basically saying Wizard of the Coast sucks uh, there's, and Hasbro sucks and the stock is down and everything is going to hell. Now, for me, and let me just speak about myself, you know, one of the big cues that something is devastatingly wrong is one of the most famous Magic players, many of you may not remember Day Them, but her name was, I, I guess Day Them's name was Autumn, and she had immense power. She was the face of the NPL, she was the face of Magic the Gathering for three years straight. Uh, so you could tell Gary Thompson, hey, you know what? Let's cancel Teresa Nielsen. Are, is my, are my NPL homies with me? Okay, everyone flush her cards down in the toilet. Make sure to get a signature signed card, flush it down the toilet. Every, Gary Thompson, you ready to scribble it out? And I didn't know this until I was live streaming and I actually checked it out. So they paid the NPL to create and stream on Twitch. And this could have been amazing. You know, let's say a hundred people with the special invites are being paid a full-time salary to go get big on Twitch. MTG Arena is dying on Twitch uh, from October, uh, from September to October, it lost 75% of the hours viewed, over. We looked at that information. But even more shockingly, you know, for a bunch of people, for the number one, the face of Magic the Gathering, how many, Twitch followers would you expect her to have, especially when they were promoting her channel every single time. Uh, you could be watching the Magic Championship and then oh, that by the way, uh, everyone subscribe in, to Autumn's channel. They promoted her channel because she was the face of Magic. She won Mythic Championship 1, which was the first MTG Arena tournament. She so won a great deal of money, you know, um, especially number one, they had viewership out the wazi. I mean, it was like, now, was it inflated? I argue it's inflated, but we can, but it's millions of people are watching. You would expect this person to have hundreds of thousands of Twitch, at least millions of followers. I mean, but whenever she would go live, she wouldn't even be able to break 50 or 100. Nobody was interested, no matter how hard Wizard of the Coast and how much money Wizard of the Coast spent promoting her or day them, uh, the individual could never pick up any viewership because people didn't like to view her. And But see, they gave her so much power that she was able to scribble no turfs on Gruel on a guru land by Teresa Nielsen and get Teresa Nielsen canceled. Like, I don't think you guys realize why so many old school players like myself, Jeremy Hambly, like Alpha Investment, why we know this is the end. It is the end because, you know, it's when we, you get to the end of something, Let's say when your boss fires you, you've probably been warned a few times, okay? The last thing, like, as an employer, I want to do is let go a, a worker because then I have to find a new worker. We have to train that new worker. You know, the longer you've been around, the more you know how things are and the more difficult you are to theoretically replace. So it's like, oh my gosh, I just got fired. Like at Facebook, when people are getting laid off, there are very, very early signals that you're probably going to get laid off months in advance, right? Oh, the stock is not doing well. Mark's metaverse is failing. Okay. Hmm. You know, if they lay off 11,000 people in a day, it is incredible. And then on LinkedIn, they make it believe like, oh, well, you know, I'm a great employee. I didn't expect to get like, no, you did. There were indications all along that you were not going to have a job. That's just how it works, right? So when the NPL is failing, it's not like in year three, they just got rid of the whole program. Just like, oh, well, oh, let's get rid. No, no, they saw signs of it not working for three years and they were already going to pull the plug probably in year two or year one. And they just wanted to 
make sure that the backlash would not be. So they empowered a group of individuals, the NPL, many of them have their demons, Owen Turtenwall, for instance. Uh, we had Yu Yu Watanabe, I think it was Yu Yu, right? Who got kicked out for cheating. Um, they have their own personal demons, but Autumn was the face of Magic the Gathering and they she was face of MTG Arena. And uh, they spent a hundred, they were going to spend a hundred million dollars over 10 years, so $10 million a year and just prizes. And then they were going to train them. They're going to fly them out to Seattle, train them how to be big Twitch celebrities. And you know, and, and then now what, what, what came as a result? They signed contracts. The result was none of them wanted to stream. None of them grew their streams even above Jeff Hoagline. I mean, you look at the people who actually made it. You know, we, we had a live stream and we're looking at the people on stream and none of them are NPL members. So what happened is very simple. This is a catastrophical 100. I mean, again, did they actually spend 100 million? No, they pulled the plug early. But I assume that it was front loaded. I assume that they didn't spend just 30 million. I assume that the year one with all the millions of views they were getting on Twitch and all the media coverage, Fortune 500, you know, all these ink, like all these amazing things. Look, here's the thing. When you empower people who are destructive and hate your game, and I can prove that she does not, or he, they, they them, Autumn does not actually love the game because if you love the game, why do you delete your Twitch account? If you love the game, why do you delete your Twitter account or move it to a, a less powerful Twitter account and don't tweet about magic? There were individuals empowered that hated Magic the Gathering. Uh, there's a controversy right now about The Witcher and Henry Cavill. And he's saying, hey, these showrunners, these people writing the script, they don't love R Witcher. They actually publicly say, I hate, I hate, it's so weird, right? It's like, I hate Witcher. It's like, wait, aren't you the person writing the script for the TV show? Yeah, I hate it. And then, so he has decided to quit. So there's this idea in my mind where you have a hundred people you gave them, you were gonna give them a hundred million dollars like in prizes and support. You gave them training. You flew the one from Japan to Seattle. You flew everyone to Seattle, told them how to stream, gave them tips. You promoted their channels on the eSports account every single blanking day. Oh, look at this person's live, this person's live, this person's live, this person's live. You didn't promote anyone else. You just promoted your NPL members and they still couldn't crack a hundred views a person on concurrent. I, in my last live stream about Rudy Chan, we did a hundred and I think 45 or something concurrent. And that's on YouTube, which is not really known for live streaming. And that's on my channel. So how can I have more concurrent viewers for the topic of Magic the Gathering than the 100 million branding that you put on Autumn? And I'm still here. Cause I actually do enjoy Matt and this is the same rate Rudy. I mean, Rudy is still there. He's still here. He's still holding bags. It would just be nice if Wizard of Coast sponsored, gave contracts out to be, and it doesn't have to be me. I know they would never give me a contract out, but like there are people out there producing way better content than Autumn could ever produce. Very positive people in the game. And when you empower people who are actually hateful, it's, it's the same thing with Netflix and Henry Cavill. You're gonna get your best employees to quit. You're gonna get people to just leave the game. You're gonna get the best customers to just be like, no, I, I had enough, this is not for me. You know, if Teresa Nielsen, my favorite artist, is canceled by a empowered Autumn, and then once they, once they end the contract with Autumn, she deletes her Twitch account, first thing she did. I was baffled because I thought her Twitch account would have 10,000, 100,000 followers. It doesn't have any. I thought her Twitter would be like really popular and, and have like all this magic. Cause I mean, think about how much money they gave her. Think about how much money she won in a very, very weak field. They picked the wrong horses and there, there is a, uh, there is a, 
You know, think about the core delaying, for instance, right? They just, they gave him two uncommons to spoil and they threw a fit on Reddit and attacked him. Not just, you know, actual employees of Wizards of the Coast attacked him and then he got physically assaulted at the Gen Con. And then, he, and he, I mean, now he's got a channel of over a million, a one milo, one million. And it's like, why did you not bet on Jeremy? Why did you bet on Autumn? Why? Like, Jeremy wouldn't have asked for money. He wouldn't have asked for a contract. He wouldn't have asked for any of this stuff. He just wants uh, uh, Uncommon to spoil every season. He didn't even ask for that. The marketing agency reached out to him. So that's how they treat customers versus influencers. And those influencers don't mean shit, man. You look at the NPL today, you go on their stream, which of them have more than 100 concurrent? I had almost 100, I, I might have, I gotta go back check. I have 140, 150, which of them have that on YouTube? Which of them even have a YouTube channel? I don't believe Autumn has a YouTube channel. I think she had like a YouTube channel has like one video on it and it's not magic related. Like if you bet the house on content creators who don't actually love or appreciate magic. So the one thing I will say about this is I do think Alpha Investment, Wizard of Coast should reach out to him. And you know, that's all they, that's all he really ever wanted is for them to reach out to him and give him a promo or something like Meadow Zoo. If they did that, he wouldn't do Meadow Zoo. He wouldn't plush flesh and blood, because why would he, right? I mean, that's not what his channel, the views are way lower in those two than Magic. And I think that's what, um, that's where we are. I think overall, my gut feeling is that they do not appreciate their customers very well. They don't appreciate their content creators who actually love the game. And they hire a bunch of uh, bozos who need to be fired. I mean, I will be the first one to say, I think they got a clean house, everybody. I don't care what you, you're a janitor, clean house. Because when the work environment is that toxic, where if you have a non-binary African-American and the Caucasian employee is stealing their ideas, which has been documented by the Dungeons and Dragons. This is not me making this up. This is all well documented. That does not sound like diversity. It sounds like you hired this non-binary African-American to make it seem like you were diverse, but in truth, you were racist as hell. That's what it seems like to me. So on the outside, you could, you know, put the uh, diversity flags in your profile picture. You can you know, walk on parades and it all sounds good, right? But then the inside, you know, it's one of those things is like, okay, cool. Why did you make such a commitment to diversity outside, but not a commitment to including people inside? I mean, I read what that person had to say. Um, that non, uh, I forget the uh, day them's name, but I thought that was very smart. And I thought that would be a very good employee. And actually that person was ahead of the curve in terms of what would happen on social media and stuff. And if they had listened to said individual and not, you know, kind of put them in a corner, that's exactly how they described it. They wouldn't have the backlash sometimes that they would. I mean, they don't listen. They listen to people who hate the game. I mean, it reminds me exactly of The Witcher. The Witcher has that exact problem. The people with the most power that they've empowered actually do not even like Witcher. They've never played the video game. They've never read the book. And then Henry Cavall, somebody who is a passionate gamer, passionate person who, he's just like, I had enough, man. I had enough. Like This is not, you know, this is not respectful to the author of the book are the, the material that you're pulling from. What you did was, it's kind of like Amazon. I actually like the Ring series, okay? I like it, the Lord of the Rings series. Uh, but it's like, mm, like, are, I mean, I don't know. Let's not get into that right now. 